Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic, and I just saw the movie Interceptor. Yes, the new action film coming straight to Netflix. And today I'm gonna give you my honest, no BS, non spoiler review and tell you if it's worth the watch. But could you guys do me a favor? Hit that like button down there. Thanks a lot. So, we have Interceptor coming straight to Netflix from director Matthew Riley, and turns out this is his first time in the director's chair. And it stars Elsa Pataki, Luke Bracey, and Aaron Glenane. And the story is about an army captain, played by Elsa Pataki, who is stationed on one of those Interceptor bases for nuclear missiles. And the base's job is to shoot down missiles that are coming towards America. However, there are some terrorists that want to shoot missiles towards America, and it's her job to stop them. Now before this video actually gets started though, I want to plug in my sponsors. Yes guys, this video is in fact sponsored by Into The AM, a wonderful clothing company, and in fact I'm actually wearing some of their merchandise right now. And three reasons why I'm impressed by them. Number one, they got a huge variety on their website. Not only do they have a bunch of graphic designs, but they have a ton of different products as well. Shirts, jackets, hoodies, you name it. Number two, they're shrink resistant. And for someone like me, that's a must because I'm super tall. And for the most part, my clothes don't normally have a very long shelf life. And number three, they are extremely soft and cozy. And the good news is, is that you guys can get 10% off your next purchase using my discount code. Link is in the video description box down below, which is why is the rum always gone? So is this movie worth a watch? Simple answer. No, this script is quite frankly atrocious, but I will give this movie a fair shot and I did give it a fair shot, still sucked, but there were some good moments that I think I should talk about first. Number one is that I liked Luke Bracey as the villain. He honestly gave a pretty good performance. He was pretty menacing. He was your typical smug asshole, right? But he served the purpose in the movie and he actually had a motivation and when he was talking about his motivation that's when I thought the film actually got pretty interesting he wants to destroy America because he was talking about how America is the greatest lie ever told and he talks about the history of America of how the founding fathers were basically trying to destroy the whole kingdom of England right they didn't want a king of America but along the line America was not the greatest country in the world and he believes that the best way to fix it is to tear it down and there's actually a pretty interesting scene where he's talking to one of the corporals who is trying to I guess stop him and he's a Hindu and he's saying well you're a Hindu right and don't you think that in America people have kind of mocked you for your faith and you get extra screenings at airports this isn't the country that I love and I'm like you know what this is some interesting stuff here but they dropped that pretty quickly the direction and the cinematography for the most part was you know adequate right like this movie did have a budget so it's not like I'm laughing at the movie because it just they don't know how to make a movie or make a good-looking movie Right, like the tension was well executed and a lot of the action scenes, you know, it's dumb schlock, but I embraced it. You know, I'm not like laughing at the screen going like, oh my God, those punches aren't hitting or, you know, the choreography is just really terrible, right? Like this movie did have a budget. That side of the movie was passable. And that's really all of the good moments I can really say about this movie. The rest, um, rather boring or terrible or laughable. And let's talk about our main character. Elsa Pataki plays J.J. Collins, the captain, our heroine of our story. And I just gotta say it. She holds her own in the action sequences, but she's a bad actress, man. And quite frankly, her backstory was just god awful. Now, you guys shouldn't watch this movie. It's not a very good movie, but if you are the type of person who complains about how Hollywood is woke nowadays, oh boy, you're gonna have a field day with this movie. So basically her backstory is that when she was coming up through the ranks in the army, one of the officers or one of the commanders, or I don't really know what uh, role he was, but he was above her. He basically said, oh, I can get you right to the top if you have sex with me, right? So you see that shot, right, where she's in his office and he's trying to like grab her ass and everything. So basically she's sexually assaulted by him, which is a terrible thing. He calls him out, he gets discharged, but then people in the army start sending her a bunch of emails and hate mail and then eventually destroy her house, right? Like just writing things like whore and bitch on the walls and that's really her backstory. Now, obviously that's a terrible thing for someone to go through, but you can just tell in this movie, it's a very cheap way for us to feel sympathy for the character because the character is really rather thin. And that's really the only reason why we end up rooting for her is because she had trauma, right? And worse yet is that we don't actually see it happen in real time. The men around her explain it to us in the audience. And that brings me to my second point. This movie is just cliche. Like I said, the backstory is just a very cheap way to make us feel sympathetic for this character. There's another villain in this movie named Beaver. 
and he is a cartoon character. He is just the one note redneck villain. You meet him, he's kind of like this, oh, hey there, Missy, hey there, darling, and he's eating yogurt with his finger, so it's like, okay, we get it. He's the gross, racist redneck, and what's his motivation? Immigrants ruined America. I need to destroy America now. I need to destroy the new America, the woke America. I am so sick and tired of all of these political and social issues creeping into movies like this and taking over character development. I'm sick of it. And there are tons of cliches that we've seen before and there's nothing new or clever about them, right? Like one character goes, the Pentagon would have called us by now. Right? You can tell that this stuff is gonna come. Or there might've been someone on the inside. And that's when the guns start firing, right? Like you can see this stuff coming from a mile away. But the biggest sin of this movie is that it's boring. I checked out at the 25 minute mark. There were a couple of moments where it grabbed my attention again. And then all of a sudden it's just like, eh. It just, it, this movie doesn't hold your attention. Now there are two moments I gotta talk about in this movie. No spoilers, but I gotta address them here. There's one moment in the movie and the filmmakers were like, this is like the big epic moment for this character. I laughed out loud, extremely loud. I'm like, this is probably one of the funniest lines I will ever hear all year in a movie. And it was for the wrong reason. This line was not meant to be funny. It was supposed to be emotional and uplifting. It was laughable. And second of all, there is a cameo in this movie by a certain actor. May I remind you that the lead actress in this movie is married to a certain actor. And then you realize why the movie was made. So for an overall rating, I'm gonna give this movie a one out of five. It's not for me. There were some moments where I'm like, you know what, that's kind of interesting. And there were some moments where I'm like, you know what, that's kind of entertaining. But for the most part, this movie is lazy. This movie is cliche extremely poorly written. I think Hollywood has just forgotten how to write female leads. And honestly, it's just like writing a male lead. Hollywood has had no problems writing male lead characters. Wants, needs, motivations, charm, charisma, something memorable about them. But nowadays I feel like with female characters they are like, oh, we need to like make them, you know, fight oppression. And you gotta have some guy trying to like hit on them now. And you know, like there's no character flaws with them, but her overcoming the patriarchy and misogyny, that's her character. I'm sick of it. Hollywood, do better. You can write great female characters and I feel like they just refuse to. So those are my thoughts on Interceptor. I know I wasn't expecting much. This is a Netflix action movie, but I had a chance to see it early. I went in with an open mind. You know, sometimes you can be surprised, but I got exactly what I thought I was gonna get out of this movie. But whatever the case may be, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear them. Hit like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos just like this, and I will see you guys again in the next video. Take care.